What is up, YouTube? I'm back with the Stanley Pariable. We just went deep down into whatever that was, and then we came back to my office, and now there's paperwork everywhere. Lots and lots of paperwork. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. Input received. Username access. I gotta go check all the computers. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. This is fishy. It says input received. So what's that mean? Looks like I can go through these doors back here too. I don't know how to get in there. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay, let's go this way. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Hoping he'd come okay. into a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. So, we can go up or down here. I'm going to go down this time. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss. Admitting he had left his post during work hours, he might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they yeah. simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief, Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Oh, then gosh. he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was oh, so my. much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. 
Amali thought it all very odd and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams. The truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself? Believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was, in fact, a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself, too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. <laughs> this is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this. And in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day the very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and, by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Bye! And we're back at the beginning, but the papers are gone. So I don't know what that means. Stanley had never seen the office this brightly lit. Was it a sign of something? He hoped it was. He hoped very much that it was. That's different. Play database. The office is now brightly lit. Okay, now we have two inputs. Don't know what that means, but we're getting inputs in. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay, let's go this way again. Yet, there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. 
Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Okay, I do know that there is... There's an elevator in here we can take. And remember, there's a exit when we go down there that says escape. Pretty sure. I remember there being an elevator back here. Don't know why it's not opening this time. Why won't you open this time? I know this one opened before. What the heck? Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. <clears throat> okay, we'll take the, uh, the escape route this time. I don't know if you guys are enjoying this. I think it's hilarious. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Escape. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plugging the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. There was Stanley. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. Whoa. Well, who's this talking to us? And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish?
When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? Oh my gosh. <clears throat> this this blueprint shows the office from the beginning of the game, the past Stanley office, the two doors, the first part of the game that was built. Sections have been added and altered throughout development, through the though the core layout remains almost identical to the first iteration. Yeah, there's my building. That's where I've been. Here's the room that I've been clicking the buttons on. Stanley's computer. Corridor. The pacing of this opening section was important to get right. This corridor has been moved and altered to make sure the player reaches the two doors in a good time. The two doors. The set of two open doors was the very first concrete piece of the Stanley Parable's design. Once this room was created, the rest of the game emerged as an extension of it, an exploration of the contradiction this room posed. And here's some filing cabinets. Selection of sound used throughout the game when buttons are pressed. Each sound is a mix of a keyboard stroke and a synthesized tone. Here's the credits to the game. We'll go left or right. Okay, so there's stairs over here. There's stairs over here too. Narrator outtakes. Weird, I can kind of hear the narrator talking, but not very loudly in that room. Okay, that says exit, so let's go this way. Kind of cool what they got going on here. So this is the other side here. Where 
development in early development we designed an ending where Stanley would end up on a battlefield fighting aliens the action game would become sentient and would wage war against the narrator we realized shortly after starting to build it that it was far too jokey and on the nose for the tone of the game plus some people interpreted it as making fun of people who like shooters which was not our intention Interesting. Weird. Green light. Subject K. So these are just questions people mailed in. Interesting. Just like a little museum they made here. So it's just different ideas they had. Interesting. So I wonder, I don't... Sending model. Sending went through many iterations. This room represents the fourth version of the ending and we thought it was complete but decided to abandon it and change it again shortly before launch. version of the ending known as his ending which was eventually cut and merged with another part of the game oh that might be the one that when I was when I fell and everything But this is a trailer. I think I've seen everything here. Let's head this way. <laughs> oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time choose. <laughs> so I was supposed to press escape and hit quit. That's the escape, hitting escape on the keyboard. Uh. 
Hello? <laughs> okay, well, that was the Stanley Parable, <laughs> I think. Like, comment, and subscribe. Kesmir out. I don't know. <laughs> Sweet.